Hi guys, so hari ni I nak uh, cerita sikit tentang uh, Uban. I did a 1ml studio video uh, about Uban and I've got a lot of requests on extension of that video. The basic concept of uh, greying of hair ni, dia konsep dia macam ni. Uh, dekat kita punya tubuh badan, kita ada melanin. So melanin ni, uh, tujuan melanin adalah untuk memberi colour. Colour untuk kita punya mata, colour untuk kita, kita, kita punya kulit dan colour untuk kita punya rambut. So, and colour ni sebenarnya diorang panggil melanin. Melanin ni ada jenis, dua jenis melanin. Satu melanin yang jenis colour yang macam yellow, uh, like that. Another jenis melanin, is uh, yang warna a little bit gelap like that okay so you can see that everybody semua orang ada melanin cuma melanin mana yang dia orang ada lebih so that what uh, gives you the skin color and also the hair color and the eye color as well okay so that's that ramai orang tanya kenapa pada usia muda pun even like younger 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 than uh, 17 years old for example ada patient saya yang umur yang start beruban umur 12 tahun kenapa I usually ask balik selalu I akan tanya balik uh, your parents ada tak uh, yang uban pada awal usia because this is genetic in that case apa yang berlaku sebenarnya dekat uh, you punya rambut tu dekat you punya okay kalau you tengok rambut rambut ni dia macam dekat bawah dia ada bulb hair bulb and dia ada macam hair shaft dekat luar tu so dekat bawah tu production of melanin dia dekat situ kilang untuk menjadikan rambut tu gelap adalah kat bawah tu okay bila when we get older and older kita build up a lot of oxidative stress so oxidative stress ni akan menyebabkan increase uh, in uh, hydrogen peroxide macam tu untuk uh, the thing is benda ni sentiasa ada dekat dekat kita punya badan tapi kita ada satu lagi jenis enzim di mana enzim ni dia menghalang daripada hydrogen peroxide uh, uh, hydrogen peroxide ni untuk macam kurangkan pigment kita so what happen is that masa kita grow older and older kita punya enzim yang catalyst ni catalyst nama dia uh, kurang so bila kurang hydrogen peroxide pun build up okay, dekat bulb tu memusnahkan melanin-melanin dekat situ dan menyebabkan uh, kita punya rambut tu kurang pigment so that's that uh, okay. the bigger weightage the bigger percentage of why you have premature graying is because of genetic Okay, uh, things that you can consider uh, if you have premature graying of the hair, get yourself tested uh, and check if you have iron deficiency. So sometimes uh, with this deficiency, you can get graying of hairs as well. Yes, I would also suggest you do um, test like uh, thyroid, thyroid function punya test. Just not tengok whether you have any, you know, that hormonal imbalance or not. So, antara produk-produk natural yang diorang selalu kata shampoo bawang kan, shampoo bawang and then like macam potato skin, you have to rebus or something like that, bunga raya, just, you know, um, and then you have the, apa tu, the daun jambu lah, there's all of that. Um, ada yang it works ada it doesn't work so basically the concept is actually to put in more nutrients and vitamins into your scalp and your your hair so you want to see if that's uh, you know doing the job or not okay not to say that you should go out and um, just rely on this the thing is what you need is something to rejuvenate your scalp we can try but at the end of the day if you want something that's more rejuvenating for your scalp your hair you can opt for something like scalp PRP. PRP ni di mana uh, kita ambil darah, okay, and then kita spin at very high speed. Uh, dia akan separate kan between the uh, darah and the plasma. So the plasma ni kita akan letak balik dekat uh, you punya scalp balik and kita akan tengok whether it works, uh, whether it can work or not. So the concept of that is sebab dia ada macam uh, growth factors dekat dalam plasma ni yang boleh membantu. Uh, selalunya kita akan buat dekat kulit kita untuk rejuvenatekan balik but uh, in this case we can do on the scalp as well. Dari segi yang botak-botak uh, eh, apa ada patch of botak dekat kawasan kepala macam uh, dia orang panggil is alopecia areata. I've got one friend, uh, quite close friend. So uh, what happened was that um, he was given uh, he was given a task by an organization that's a little bit too much for him but more much of stress though because it's stressing him out i think so what happened is that 
he came uh, to me showing his hair. He lost like a patch of them, like a patch of them down. So it was like literally botak kat kawasan tu. So uh, bilik datang and then uh, we, we did some treatment. We do hair complex treatment and uh, I did some injections. And after a while, it gone away. But I thought, okay, why is this happening? And then um, truth to be told that even kalau you are distressed or something that macam life event, it could affect that to your life. It's called alopecia areata. So yeah, I mean, that one is just temporary. Uh, it's just for a while. I think after three months, two to three months, something like that, it grew back to normal. And he's fine until that is uh, quite an eye opener to see the impact of stress into your, you know, your hair. That um, uh, dekat double ni actually kita ada hair unit dekat situ where we uh, cater untuk those yang ada scalp problem, yang ada rambut problem, uh, they can do treatment there. So that that's that's kind of interesting. And then uh, I have a lot of complaints from uh, new mothers, you know, uh, yang dah beranak, dah melahirkan anak. So what happened was that um, when they give birth, they start losing hair a lot. So that one is called telogen effluvium. I know it's like a mouthful, but really it's just hormonal. Uh, usually, uh, patient-patient macam ni selalunya akan uh, respond well to our hair tonic because uh, what they do is uh, it rejuvenated the scalp. And dalam masa yang sama, dia menggalakkan pertumbuhan high quality hair that comes out, okay? So that's the second one. There's an interesting cases as well that um, we have helped in the past. Um, another case is uh, receding hair. Macam uh, men with receding hair. So macam area of the hair is like macam uh, quite bold. So sometimes dia dekat sini, sometimes dia dekat, you know, dekat sini. So there are a, a, few, a few types of them. Usually, these kind of uh, cases is very, very hard to treat kalau using hair tonic alone. But there were cases that it has helped, okay? But it comes, it boils down to it needs to be rejuvenated, that's all, really. Usually, genetic yang macam ni, kita akan usually datang dekat, uh, apa, dekat Dermalin. Uh, we do some hair treatments, procedures. Uh, so, after a while, kita akan observe. Uh, kalau, let's say, it doesn't work, then baru kita suggest to opt for um, hair transplant. Yes. And so hair transplant ni, basically dia akan ambil hair dekat bahagian belakang kepala and then dia akan uh, keluarkan follicle by follicle by follicle. Uh, it's quite a tedious punya procedure. But what they do is, they will letak this hair follicle back to where the the receding hair was. So that's that, okay? Uh, and then selalunya after uh, after macam dalam one month macam tu tak silap I, uh, dia akan fall off. But the thing, the idea of this is actually the follicle tu menghidupkan balik the follicle tu. So bila follicle tu, bila dia uh, hair fall, so dia start off with hair fall sekejap, dia dip sekejap and then dia akan naik balik. So these are uh, apa, these are the, the kind of things that are available now, seriously. Rawatan untuk uh, yang tanam rambut ni basically is quite expensive. For me, if you want to do like, um, if you want to do a uh, hair transplant, you better opt for something that natural that's using your own hair rather than synthetics because then it will look more natural. Uh, usually it will cost around, tak silap I, around uh, up to 15 ringgit per hair, per hair follicle. So up to 15 or 20 ringgit per hair follicle. Um, but if you guys want, I could uh, let you guys know to one of my friends who did it uh, at, I think at 7 ringgit per hair, which is really, really good price, right? So yeah, I mean, we can we can try that. At the end of the day, it's about trying, uh, it's about trying different, different products. There are prescription products which you can spray on, on your scalp. This is called minoxidil. So minoxidil can help, uh, uh, of course, because this is actually proven. But the thing is, there is side effect with minoxidil, much like impotency. So, um, and then uh, there's reduction in sexual drive. There, uh, there were cases that the thing is with minoxidil, people are afraid of it because of the, uh, because of uh, the you know, like erectile dysfunction. That's all the the kind of thing that they describe describe in the side effects, right? But the thing is, you're not using it for a long time, kind of thing. So you just use it for a while, just maybe 
for one week and that's it for one week or two weeks and that's it so for me i feel that um it's not really that bad yeah so i hope i've answered some of the questions uh so if you have more questions then i'll answer later okay so i'm gonna have to start editing this because it's a little bit too long okay bye